of Scotland since our start. He's been on the stage at every big event, but he does it with incredible gentleness. He is the gentleman who I said earlier reminds us constantly that we belong to one another. He speaks always from lived experience and he wants to make sure that the wider country hears It is with great pleasure I walk to the stage. Jane. Being told that I was like a teenager. 
and I need to manage it and I'm glad to go um, fantastic with work colleagues and people in my life who allow me the self-care processes I need to <coughs> keep myself regulated and, and my partner that I've called Tex Cam McCoskey told me a long time ago she had been brain years <laughs> and, and I got the opportunity to be in that brain because people like you understood the point yeah, me boy was me. And that I wasn't a bad boy that needed to be good. I was a wounded wee boy that needed support to get well. And they're two different things. I'm fed up hearing about evidence-based practice. See that mantra? Evidence-based practice. I want to see their practice based on the evidence. Let's talk about more practice based on the evidence, we know it works. And also have the humility to seek atonement for our end mistakes, the service providers. Because I've had to go through my own restorative process and all the prisoners that I know have to go through a process, a reconciliation, restorative processes, healing the relationship with yourself, healing the relationship with the family system, we would never really take our own inventory as systems and services and recognise what we are getting wrong and seek the appropriate amends. Nobody ever said sorry to me. Nobody. And I don't know of any prisoners in this room or anybody who's navigating the system. Has the system ever stood up and said sorry to you? No. And I'm sorry that that's happened. Because we kind of profess to be getting it right all the time. It's all right to get it right. Because I was taught in the healing journey that I wasn't the worst thing I've ever done. So see if I'm not the worst thing I've ever done, that's the same for prison staff, systems, services. They're going to get it wrong as well. But a big part of that is important. Peter Levine, one of the foremost trauma black belts in the planet, said that trauma is perhaps the most avoided, ignored, belittled, denied, misunderstood, and untreated cause of human suffering. It's well researched. Trauma is the cause of all social dysfunction. I never went to an addiction service, or the justice service, or the children's panel system, or the young offender system <coughs> because I was a bad boy I went there because I was traumatised. There's no school to prison pipeline, it's a trauma to prison pipeline. And when we look at the adverse childhood experience study, don't get stuck on my hand. Because that's where we have a tendency to do that, when you stuck on the stuff that happened, it shouldn't have happened. Rather than pour our focus and our power into providing what was missing. That was probably the hardest thing to navigate in my own journey of trauma. I had nobody to tell. I didn't even know. And I've been an advocate for them. Um, see, that's the thing, isn't it? It's that. Uh, have you ever noticed that Scottish people have? Fritz has picked up on it and she's just been here a wee while that was so stoic and cut off their emotions. I mean, we are that stoic, we disguise it as professionalism. <laughs> but in full flight for your emotions under the guise of being a professional. But if you ask a lot of colleagues how they feel, they'll tell you what they think. I'll put the kettle on and Make an excuse to head for the war. I mean, we're that stoic as a country that you could be sitting next to your law colleague and you could be having a nervous breakdown. And you wouldn't even know. Because <laughs> <laughs> all that good at hiding that stuff. That's a trauma response. The biggest adverse childhood experience in Scotland, the one that's most prevalent across the whole of your society, it's a most trauma vulnerability. We don't know how we hold each other emotionally. Children's 
children are seen and no heard. John Cameron for a long time ago says to me, we don't like Wales in Scotland. And I was taken aback by it. I do understand what he meant by that. So I guess what I'm trying to say as well is, is that um, we've got too many people in prison who shouldn't be there. Any prison officer, governor, anybody with any insight into trauma and the issues that are navigating the prison. And that's why it's no fair on the system to expect them to, to resolve all that. It's because they shouldn't be in there in the first place. We look at Cisco, for example, the team at Cisco, which is a great example of what happens when lived experience get together and create an organisation that is able to hold, hold people in the community when they leave prison and they've got an 84% success rate in preventing recidivism. And the reason that is is because it's very, very important that we are able to tell our stories, tell our survivors. Do you know why? Because they know the story. Because it's their story. And they understand the pain. And they know how to be in a compassionate response to that. Once you truly understand human suffering, the byproduct is compassion. And that's why Cisco is so successful with the day. And I'll finish with this. We do best to so feel safe enough to share the experience with a group of people who already know the story. That's all survivors. Yes, prisoners made some mistakes and they are accountable. But the, but the system is accountable also for not seeing their pain and enabling the healing of that. We fail the victims twice if we don't heal people while they're in their care.